Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. I'm calling this series The School of Prayer. In each episode, I'm going to explain a method of meditation from the Catholic spiritual tradition. And after a fairly concise overview of the method, I'm going to demonstrate it. This means this episode is mainly going to be guided mental prayer. So if you're looking for some kind of Catholic entertainment, this isn't the video for you right now. Today we're going to be looking at St. Ignatius and his imaginative contemplation. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this method. Then we are going to do that method of prayer. My hope is that you will then be in a position to use this method of praying in your daily holy hour or however long you set aside for meditative prayer. Okay, so 30 seconds or so of history about this method of prayer. It comes from St. Ignatius's own life. While he was convalescing, people were bringing him books to read, novels about the lives of nobles, of knights, doing great deeds to rescue damsels in distress and that kind of thing. And he enjoyed them for a while, but they left him empty and he wanted some more, but there weren't any more. So they brought to him the Gospels. And as he read the Gospels and he daydreamed about them, much as he had daydreamed about being a, being a knight rescuing damsels in distress, he realized that after daydreaming about the Gospels and the lives of the saints, he realized how invigorated he was after doing so, how peaceful and optimistic and spiritually alive he felt afterwards. During an intense retreat, he wrote a book called The Spiritual Exercises, which outlines the method I'm going to describe. The book contains enough material to do four or five of these meditations a day for 30 days in a row, each lasting an hour. That's how he initially designed this method to be used. But he also said that the meditations and the method of meditation could be used in daily life. That was his recommendation. Many of the spiritual exercises are based on gospel passages, but others are on theological truths and a few are on imaginary scenes. Like, for instance, he asks us in one occasion to imagine two armies, Christ's army and the evil one's army. And then after imagining the scene, he asks you to carefully make a conscious choice to be a part of Christ's army. Okay, so that's a brief history of the method. Now, a description of the method. If you're going to be using this method of prayer, you will always be using the following five steps. First of all, you read the passage of scripture read it slowly. Secondly, you read the passage again, but this time asking yourselves question concerning the scene, the location, the people present, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the temperature, the time of day. You ask yourselves questions to, to build up the scene in your mind, to paint a picture of the scene in your mind. So that's the second step. The third step is then to take a place in the scene, choose a location for yourself, and then reread or reimagine the event from that position, following Jesus through the scene from your position, and reflecting intently from your position on everything our Lord is doing in the scene. So that's the third step. The fourth step, the most important, and the, the one that should take the bulk of the meditation, is after following Jesus slowly through the scene, you begin a personal, imaginative conversation with our Lord as a part of the scene, or as a result of the scene. Speaking about something that's moved your heart or caught your attention during the event in the scripture passage. It may be in the, in the holy hour, you go through these four steps repeatedly as you read passages of scripture 
or as you go over the same passage focusing in on elements of it. The fourth step is called the colloquy, the colloquy. And then the fifth step, the final step, is to make resolutions based on this interaction with our Lord. Resolutions for your daily life, how you're going to live this day differently. Now we're going to begin. I'll be putting the text on the screen. You may wish to find the section in your Bible and turn off the computer screen, or otherwise you don't actually need to read the texts. I'm going to be reading them through. And usually when I lead these spiritual exercises, I just tell people to close their eyes or concentrate on an image of our Lord. So if you're in a position where you can participate in this way, then do so. Otherwise, at least try to make it so you are not going to be interrupted or distracted as best you can. The scriptural passage we're looking at is Matthew 14 verses 20 to 27. Matthew 14 verses 20 to 27. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Now we're going to read this again. This time, trying to apply our own imagination to the scene, trying to picture the realities. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Jesus had just fed the 5,000. Imagine that huge number of people. See their individuality. Picture the crowds. Look around you. What kind of people do you see? Women, old men, young children running around. Walk through the crowd. Listen into their conversations. What are they talking about? Mundane things? Getting home? about what our Lord had said to them, 
about the food they had eaten, about their plans for tomorrow. What is the ground like where they're seated? Is it dusty and arid? Or is it a great green field? Now think about the weather. It is beginning to draw towards evening. Is it still warm? A long summer evening? Or are people beginning to get cold in the cool evening air? You are a member of the crowd. And you can see Jesus a little way in the distance. What is he wearing? What colour is his robe? Does he look tired out? Does he look exhausted from the heat of the day? Or is he still full of energy? Is he speaking with the crowd? Or is he more reflective with a certain distance from all those around him? Suddenly, there is some activity, we read. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. You see this from a distance. How did the disciples respond to this? Do they seem reluctant? Or do they look satisfied? Or perhaps really pleased with our Lord's commands? And then you begin to watch the disciples picking up their things and heading in the direction of the shore. Is a lake far? Is it within sight? Perhaps it's close enough for there to be little insects in the air or the smell of waters. Now Jesus turns to the crowd. Does he go round to the different groups? Does he make an announcement? What does he say? How does he dismiss the crowd? How does his voice sound? Imagine his voice speaking these words. Imagine him catching your eye as he speaks to the crowd. Listen to the people around you. What are they saying? Do they disperse quickly? Watch the great crowd as it scatters. And then Jesus himself turns and walks in a different direction. We read, After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Picture the mountainside. How tall is it? How steep is it? Is there a path? Or must our Lord climb on the rocks? What sounds can you hear as our Lord travels up the hill? Are there rabbits jumping? Little creatures? Are there birds calling to each other? Can you hear the crowd at all anymore? You've chosen to follow our Lord. 
as he goes up the mountainside. You watch Jesus carefully. He's only a few meters in front of you. Listen to his breath growing shorter as his journey continues pacing up the hill. Is he wearing sandals? Is he carrying anything? Evening has given way to night as Jesus reaches the quiet, lonely place, lit only by moonlight. You feel a little colder now. Jesus immerses himself in prayer. Is he standing? Is he kneeling? Does he sit? Is he lying face to the ground? You can still hear noises of the wildlife around you. The crickets, a few birds, the wind moving the trees. Jesus is oblivious to these things. You see him transfixed in prayer. You move closer. You see his lips moving. Look at his face. What expression do you see there? He is praying out loud. You can hear his words. What does he say to his father? You then realize he is praying for his disciples. What does he ask for them? You hear the names of different apostles, Peter, Andrew, James, John. Then, in the middle of his prayers, you hear your name. Jesus is praying for you. He is speaking to his Father about you. What does he say? He describes you. He identifies you to his father. How does he describe you? Jesus thanks his father for creating you, designing you. He names all the unique attributes you have that the Father has given you. Delight in the knowledge that Jesus has of you. Be filled with wonder that Jesus is aware of all the details of your life.
you notice that there is one pressing matter in particular that Jesus presents to the Father on your behalf. What is this matter, this aspect of your life that Jesus in a special way lays before his Father this evening? Is it a sin that you need to ask forgiveness for? Is it a grace that you are most in need of? Is it something that you are unaware of that will enter your life very shortly. Thank Jesus in your heart for his concern for you, for knowing all the details of your life and for laying them before the Father and for laying before the Father this particular concern of yours. How does the Father respond to Jesus? Do you hear the response? Jesus then prays for those dear to you. You are filled with surprise as he prays for someone known to you who has long abandoned the Catholic faith. Who does he pray for? You are filled with awe and wonder at the love Jesus has for this prodigal child of his. You see the great pain in his expression as he begs his father to give that individual the grace of conversion. Is this how you have been praying for that individual till now? Join our Lord in begging for the conversion of that individual. Make a resolution to be more faithful in prayer for their conversion. From the cliff edge, you see the boat that the disciples are in sailing across the lake. Is it just a small light that you can see? Can you hear them? Are there bells? Perhaps it is just a dot in the vast expanse of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus walks down from the mountainside. Does he hurry? Or is he slow and pensive? Maybe you speak with him as he walks down. Now place yourself in that boat with the disciples. We read, the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Picture those waves buffeting the boat. Feel the boat being tossed from side to side. Splashes of water on your face. 
your clothes are soaking wet. How many people are on the boat? What are they doing? Are they panicking? Is the ship in danger? Or is this something they're used to? And something the boat can withstand? Hear the sound of the crashing waves see the stars above you the vast sky do you see any lights on the distant shores are there any other boats struggling through the waters the long night is coming to an end see a crack of light on the horizon the waters shimmer in the pale light of the morning. Is the sea still rough? Is the boat still being tossed from side to side? Or are the waters beginning to settle? We read. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. catch sight of the figure in the distance with the other disciples experience their response their astonishment their fear see the movement of his gown in the wind see the waves wetting the bottom of his robe we read when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Hear their shouts. Look around at their faces. This fear only lasts a moment because we read but Jesus immediately said to them take courage it is I don't be afraid watch their faces how do their emotions change see their expressions Do they speak to each other? Offer them words of encouragement. Reassure them that it's really him. You know who it is. You know that the presence of Jesus casts out all fear. They accept your words and are filled with joy, wonder, and holy fear as Jesus approaches him. They fall to their knees in deep adoration and prayer. And you speak to him. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, that you have come to me. Lord, your presence casts away all fears. What am I afraid of? What do I fear losing in my life? What are my fears for the future? I own and admit 
all of my fears to you. I admit them in your presence. I lay them before you. I hear your words being repeated to me personally. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. I wonder at the expression on your face, Jesus, as you say these words to me. I see your lips move, pressing out each word. Lord, you know my life situation better than I do. I rest in this wonderful truth. Lord, I thank you for entering into my secret fears into this night. I believe that because you are here, nothing can frighten. Nothing can trouble me. But I admit to you, Jesus, I don't always feel this peace. Lord, is there some blockage in my life that is stopping me from experiencing your peace? Jesus, whisper to me now what it is, so I may always have your peace. A peace that the world cannot give. Show me, Lord, if there is a sinful attachment. Show me, Lord, if there is a lack of prayer. Show me, Lord, if I'm listening to too many voices other than yours. Jesus, I resolve to change what needs to be changed in my life so I can always encounter this peace. So in every storm I can know your presence and freedom from all fears. Lord Jesus, I believe you bring peace in all situations. Help me to share this peace with others. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this encounter today with you. I'm sorry for my many sins. I ask you for the grace to put my resolutions into practice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world of our ten, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world of our ten, amen. Blessed Mother Mary, pray for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.